Imagine, if you will, a winter commute home, but unfortunately for you, there's a storm rolling in and your freeway drive has turned into a crawl, has now turned into a halt, and your chance to make the news has come because you are now one of the hundreds stranded on the freeway. Hopefully this doesn't happen to you, but the question is, how long are you gonna be there? And that's a question that I can't answer, but what I can do is explore a little bit further into the question I have, are you better off being in an electric vehicle or a gasoline option? And unfortunately, I don't have an internal combustion vehicle with me here, but I do have our long-term Volvo C40, and I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time in here, getting a little bit chilly, trying out a number of different conditions to see just how long you might be able to, let's not say survive, let's say be comfortable in an electric vehicle should you end up in a pretty tight spot. So time for me to hop in and get a little chilly. All right, we're at the half hour and I'm gonna start the clock right now. So here's what's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the vehicle on, which in this car you have to do by putting in reverse or drive. So I put it in drive and then immediately back to park. From here, we're going to take a look at how much energy has been used so far on my last trip, and that was on my way up here. In the half hour from now, I'll go ahead and set that timer. We'll check how much energy we've used. And the only things that are going to be on are going to be the screens here for the car. I'm going to turn the headlights on, assuming we are in a winter storm scenario, in which case it would probably be dark, and you would probably be sitting there with your lights on. I'm also going to, at this point, leave everything else off. So there's no heat, there's no heated seat, no heated steering wheel. The only other things that are running are gonna be electronics. And this is, again, just sort of an assumption. I am gonna be charging one of my GoPros while it's recording, and then I'm also going to be charging my phone because I need to have something to do over the next half hour. We've officially hit the half hour mark, which means the running tally of how much energy we use just sitting here is come to a close. The next step is going to be to keep myself a little bit warmer. So what I'm gonna do is simply go in, turn on the heated seat, and that's going to be the next level of comfort. So heated seats are going to be a way to keep me warm without having to warm this entire cabin. And that's gonna be a helpful piece because if I'm trying to maximize my energy savings or energy efficiency, and if I don't know how long I'm gonna be here, the only thing I wanna do is heat myself. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna turn on all the other heated seats, but it is worth noting that this particular model does come with the climate package. And the climate package is one of the reasons that I'm doing this test at all. The reason being is the climate package for this vehicle and something you would wanna look at in other vehicles if this is your climate in any normal fashion, comes with not only a heated seat and heated steering wheel, heated seats for all the outboard seats as well, so passenger and then the two outside on the back, but it also is going to include a heat pump. And the heat pump means that this is going to be much more efficient when it comes to heating the vehicle. Now, as we can see on the screen, and kind of what I expected is that turning on this heated seat is going to use very little electricity. And on our visible display where it shows us how much we're using at any given moment, right now it's still showing one kilowatt. And honestly, I'm guessing this is kind of the default, but that's why I've gone ahead and kept track on the overall trip computer which again is a little bit wonky, uh, but that'll tell us essentially after some math that I'll have to do a little bit later, essentially how much energy we've ended up using. So that first half hour is behind us. The next half hour is started. I'll check back in a half hour from now. And uh, good news, I'll be a little bit warmer because I'll at least have a heated seat. And that heated seat is heated seat and lower back. So it's not just a tushy warmer. Um, that's a win. I won't go ahead and turn on the heated steering wheel at this point. Again, we're just trying to do little pieces at a time. Uh, the next one will be where I actually get to get warm and I expect we'll see that we use a little bit more electricity. Thirty minutes down, last half hour, and this is the one I'm looking forward to because this is the one I'll actually turn the heat on. So we'll go into our settings, we'll turn heat on auto, and we'll set it to two. Now it looks like the car just considered going to sleep. We'll go ahead and wake that back up. No problem. None of the systems actually shut off, but the main display seemed to want to go to sleep. But that happened all in an instant, and we caught it right away, so no problem there. Now, one thing interesting did happen in the last half hour set, which was, I'd say about 10 or so minutes ago, the car got a little bit quieter and we went from one kilowatt down to, we'll get back here, we went from one kilowatt down to zero. And that was the first indicator that the vehicle had actually 
not just gone to sleep, but it actually probably had been heating the batteries, which is what that little extra sound had been. And the batteries seemed to be at operating temperature and no longer needed the same sort of heat. So the heated seat stayed on. I could still feel it pushing heat through. Um, but we were down at reading zero kilowatts, which obviously it is still using electricity. But as far as the car is concerned, it's pretty minimal. Now that we've gone ahead and turned the heat on, however, we jumped immediately to about seven kilowatts because this car has been sitting for probably close to two hours at this point with no heat on and it's freezing outside, just a little bit below freezing. Uh, I think my phone said 29 degrees at my last check. The car is not only just pushing out 68, but it's trying to play some catch up. I've got some condensation on the window. I've got snow on the ceiling. So this is not a warm vehicle. I expect the heat's gonna ramp up and we're probably not gonna sit here at seven kilowatts the whole time. It's probably gonna go ahead and slide back down after a few minutes of getting everything warm. I don't expect we'll stay at this seven or six kilowatts I'm seeing right now. It should kind of ramp back down. But again, this is one of the big places we'll benefit from the heat pump. Unfortunately, I don't have an exact replica of this C40 without the heat pump so that we can't do a direct check. But again, like I said, if this is a climate that you're in on a regular basis, um, or you do a lot of driving in, maybe you live here, but you don't do a lot of driving, in which case it would be less important, but still something you want to consider. And at this point already, we've already dropped down to four kilowatts. So either way, we've got another 27 minutes to go and I'll check in on the back end. Well, that was the last interval and it was by far the most interesting and the most comfortable. As you can see, no more had our gloves feel totally necessary, but 40 minutes ago, that was definitely not the case. That said, I've still been out here for quite a while. So it's time for me to head home. I still have a little bit of driving to do. And when I get there, I'm gonna get a hot cup of cocoa and dive deeper into some of these numbers. Point and use that trip as my meter. So where I started, I just kept adding two in these intervals and that's where I got that total energy usage. I do wish the car had an actual energy usage readout because that probably would have been more accurate and certainly easier to pull together than what I have here. But here's what I gathered. During our first interval where we had the vehicle on, the headlights on, and we had two devices charging, we ended up using in half an hour 0.3104 kilowatt hours, which is a pretty small number. But this is the first time I've had a number for what a vehicle uses while it's just sitting there running. So for me, this is just baseline information. But obviously it was cold. So in the background, we're probably seeing some battery heating going on. But again, a readout would have been much more helpful in this scenario. I do think that battery heating ended up being a pretty significant chunk of that power consumption because when I went ahead and turned on the heated seat in the same half hour increment, I ended up with 0.3107, which for those of you keeping track at home is a 0 0.0003 increase. But here's what happened there during that second interval is that the car actually kind of shut off, not like the powered off the home screen, but there was an ambient sound that I hadn't been super aware of until it disappeared. And that's when the car readout went from a one kilowatt down to zero. Luckily it did tell us instantaneous usage, but obviously we didn't end up using one kilowatt hour in that half hour or even half on either of these. So that's probably gonna be a rounded up situation um, or more than, I don't know, 30% above zero kilowatts. Because when that sound disappeared, so too did that kilowatt readout and it just said, zero and that was off for a few minutes at least and for me that's the car shutting off some of that battery heating and again we ended up with pretty much the exact same thing so two things happening here obviously that battery heating is going to be a significant part of this but not an enormous part once this battery has been warmed up because as a reminder i did just make a trip so the vehicle had been nice and warm from that morning before and then the other thing is that turning on that heated seat really didn't change that equation very much, which is the entire point of having that heated seat because they wanna make sure that you can get yourself warmer while using less electricity and having just that current running through the seat is very little energy comparative to what we're gonna run into next, which is on that third interval where I went ahead and turned on the heat. Now I set it to 68 for myself. I usually set my temperature to 68, but I also figured that would be a relatively a reasonable number for folks who maybe they're normally set into 72, 74 or above. But if you do find yourself in a stuck situation where you are trying to do some power management, you would likely turn that temperature down just a little bit. And obviously I could have tried to run it at 64 or 66 or 60, any of these other options, but I set 68. So this is ideally you being fairly comfortable in this vehicle while you are stranded. 
But as you saw, when I turned it up to 68, where the vehicle had been saturated in the cold, it ended up winding up to about 7 kilowatts on its immediate usage, or in instantaneous consumption. And that did slowly wind down, so 7, 6, 5, then it went 4, 3, 2, and kind of bounced between 2 and 3 for a while, then between 3 and 4. And really, this is the car fighting that cold, and obviously taking more energy to heat up the cabin rather than maintain it. Because at the end, the last few minutes there, it was comfortably sitting at 1 kilowatt, which is the same reading we were getting when we just had the heated seat on and when the vehicle was just sitting there operational. Again, obviously, in this case, probably running the battery heater versus not running the battery heater. But the point here is that in that time, we used a lot more energy. But in that same half hour, we were still only at 1.1252 kilowatt hours, which leaves us with these measurements that are now the easiest to keep track of. So what I'm going to propose is that we measure these in kilowatt hours per hour. And that's obviously just sitting there, how much energy it used. For the first two, we averaged about 0.62 kilowatt hours per hour. And for the third one, we got up to 2.25 kilowatt hours per hour. So you can see it's a huge increase when you go ahead and turn that heat on. But I would argue, and if I had had more time, I may have stuck out there a little bit longer, that it's going to be in your situation, uh, probably best to leave that heat on as long as you have a decent chunk of electricity because heating the vehicle up is gonna take a whole lot more than it is to just maintain that heat. And that's kind of gonna be a win-win scenario. The other thing, the big question is how much time can you spend in your electric vehicle if you are stuck in the cold? And obviously the colder it gets, the more energy you'd end up using or the less cold it was, obviously the less energy. But in my situation, just below freezing, at this approximately 2.25 kilowatt hours, if you have 50 kilowatt hours of battery available to you, that means you're looking at over 20 hours of being able to sit there and waiting for help to come. And that's a long time to be able to sit and wait. And that is assuming that you're running the heater the whole time at a reasonable temperature. Well, I don't have an internal combustion vehicle, not a hybrid, a standard internal combustion vehicle here to compare it to. What I see here is that an electric vehicle with a heat pump does a really good job of making the most of the energy that it's using. Understanding that driving in the cold is going to be less efficient but driving an electric vehicle takes a ton of energy, just like driving a gasoline vehicle. But in this case, if you're running your engine to run the heater, you are burning a lot more energy and you're being a lot less efficient with it because it takes such a small fraction of that idling engine to run that heater that the rest of the energy is just being wasted. On electric vehicles can be much more focused, even if it is heating the batteries while it's also heating your cabin. But I think this really boils down to if you are concerned about driving an electric vehicle and getting stuck somewhere, you're probably going to be okay. That just might mean that if you're making a trip that you give yourself a little bit more buffer. Maybe that means you stop at that DC fast charge station a little bit longer between stops to make sure in the event of emergency, you still have power available. But something I think lends itself to electric vehicle ownership in this case is that most EVs are charged at home and they're charged all the way up at home where your gasoline vehicle is obviously not getting refilled when you go back to the house. So on any given day, I think chances are higher that you're gonna have a low fuel tank than you are a low battery. Meaning that if you find yourself in this situation, you might have more energy stored up on board available for your usage in an electric vehicle than you may in a gas car. However, if you find yourself in this situation, my suggestion is make friends with the people around you and pool those resources because we can definitely make the most of those. That's all I've got for this one. If there's something you think I missed or you have other data that you've run on your own, go ahead and include that down in the comment section below. I would love to see it. If you have any other thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them there as well. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you down the road and hopefully you're not stuck on that road. Stay safe and stay warm.